Every now and then during a difficult phase of life, you do a practice or an experiment or try something new and it really does change your life going forward for the better. Now in this video, I thought I would share a practice from Taoism that is something that has helped me quite a lot in times of difficulty. Times where you've sort of lost faith in life, times where you aren't sleeping well, times where you feel like your faith is being tested and challenged, times where you need that spiritual fortitude to get through your life and get over that horizon to better times. So let's jump in and let's talk about this practice here. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master the Day. So let's get in. Now, some years ago, I was going through a really, really difficult time. It was a time where I had a long-term relationship ending and I was having some significant health problems and financial problems all in one. I found that working with my patients is that each of those pillars of your life is like a leg of a stool and you can lose one leg of the stool, but as soon as you lose two, people fall and it is very difficult for them to recover for a long period of time. Now, I could feel myself going into that phase of falling and it was going to be probably a long time before I could get back up. And so I began turning towards lots of spiritual texts for some inner guidance. The great way is easy, yet people prefer the side paths. And it made me think that a lot of the practices that we need to do to heal, we know, but they're very difficult to do in practice. So I told myself, what if I just decided to pretend that all of these things that happened to me, I was guided and that I was guided in everything I was doing. I was guided by some other power towards the right path for my health healing, love, everything. And so as time went on, I was still going through these depths of despair. And yet I decided to actually continue with this thought. What if I'm just guided in everything that I do? Those down things happen for a reason. It's going to guide me to the next best thing. This lost love, these finances, all these health problems, they are guided to me for a reason. And I am guided towards something else. You know, for example, you can be in this career that gives you the golden handcuffs with all the money. You're in finance, but your spirit wants to be an acupuncturist, wants to travel the world or be a photographer or go into something else that has soul. You feel it within you, but you can feel that guidance and still be too afraid to take action. You can be in an abusive marriage or relationship and feel guided to desperately get out and get help and yet not have the courage or be too afraid to leave this for fear of the repercussions or what the unknown looks like. You can be guided to have a hard conversation with a friend, but be so afraid of losing that friendship because you're saying what you really think finally or drawing that boundary that you don't say it. So what do we do in these circumstances? You know, in traditional Buddhism and Taoism, there's this concept of keeping a quiet heart heart, polishing the heart mirror. There's a whole Ram Das book about that. And this is one of those core practices that Li Qingyun, this monk sage man that lived to be a very, very, very old man, had put together as one of his daily healing practices to live a long life from traditional Chinese medicine. If you haven't read it, it's the first link below this video. It's a downloadable link. You can also go to dralexheim.com forward slash free to download it. But it's fascinating because it talks about what we're talking about here. In those times of difficulty, when your insides have been detonated and every source of stability has been taken from you, what do you do to find that spiritual fortitude and strength? You know, if you haven't seen my video on my vision quest in the Sahara Desert, the Berbers, the Tuareg that I was traveling with through the desert there have a saying from Arabic and they say, Inshallah. And Inshallah sort of is translated as God willing. And so they would say things like, you know, I'm planning to try to go see my family, but there's war in the desert. You know, I would love to go see them. Inshallah, God willing. It's meant to be, it'll be. And if God wants me to do that, if it, the doors open, then I will be guided and it will happen. And maybe that relationship ends the one you're so crazy about and you're not sure if you're ever going to find that again and you have to say inshallah god willing you know the right thing will happen no matter what we will find each other again at the right time or we'll find better and everything will be okay as i was on this vision quest in the sahara i was going there for some deeper purpose feeling lost and purposeless one of the old tuareg men this guy named eli or Ely. Because I speak French, they were speaking in French and they have a native language too. But in French, they were saying he was so lighthearted and someone was commenting, how are you so lighthearted? And he just said, everything feels guided by God to me. Everything is inshallah. Everything is, if it will be, it's supposed to be. And if it will not be, it is not meant to be. All of it is inshallah. It's supposed to be the way that it is unfolding. And there's nothing to be afraid of and nothing to worry about. The lost love, the wrong career, the lost money, the fear and the meaninglessness, the health problems. It is all divinely perfect, he was saying. And I've played with this ever since I left that desert, ever since I left that solo on that sand dune, playing with this, especially during times of difficulty. You know, the great way, the Tao is easy, but people prefer the side paths. So how do you actually live your life from this place of surrender, from this place of non-attachment? You know, after all, I've had patients come in who are women that want to leave their husband, that want to leave their relationship, and they're overwhelmed by the guilt of leaving their kids. They're overwhelmed by the guilt, even if it's a toxic relationship. And they can feel guided that I have to get out of this. 
chance I'm going to die of cancer being married to this person. But the courage and the bravery and the faith when you're standing on the precipice, the edge of the cliff, not knowing what leaping off is going to look like is what the real bravery is and where inshallah comes in. But one thing that I've seen is that the more you can let go and the more you can trust and follow those gut feelings, these gut hunches, the more you can trust this inshallah, God willing, I'm always being guided, the bigger and better your life can become. The more you can trust that you're always being guided towards something bigger and better and more healing. The more you can trust and act on that with faith, the better your life and your healing and your health and your spirituality will be. And that is the ultimate journey into the pathway of surrender because that is the ultimate letting go. You don't know as you stand on the edge of the cliff what will happen as you leave. Even though the forest or the village is burning behind you, you don't know what is there, but that's why they say it's a journey of faith. So that's what I have for you today, guys. A bit of a deeper message on surrendering to the journey of life, especially if you're going through it, whether it's your health or something else personally. Again, I work with a few limited new patients every single week in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. If you want to reach out, call the clinic. The information is right below in the description or you can go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic. And I have another video on emotional and spiritual healing right up here.